And together we take, close our eyes and take six deep relaxing breaths. And with every inhale we breathe in more light. With every exhale we let go of all tension. And as we let go with each exhale, we feel the floor beneath us and the earth beneath the floor. And we feel supported. And with every breath, it feels safer and safer to completely let go. And we picture ourselves now on top of a beautiful mountain. The sun is just setting in the west. We are gathered together in a circular grove of trees. And in the center of our circle, a bonfire begins to blaze forth. And as the light grows brighter and brighter and the flames leap higher and higher, it lights us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. And we recognize this light as pure inspiration, perfect love and perfect trust. And we notice that everything that is unlike perfect love and perfect trust is burned as fuel in this fire until we are only left with love. And into this sacred space, we now invite the presence of our own inspired selves, our higher selves, our ancestors, those who have gone before us, our father and our mother. And we dedicate this time that we spend together to them. And we ask that we be led upon the way and we grow in wisdom to become happier peaceful, and more loving people. Thank you very much. Together we all say blessed be. Blessed, blessed be. be. Okay, so um, there's a, I kind of like this dark mood lighting in here. It feels good. I hope if I doze off, poke me. <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> There is a very common theme in most wisdom teachings, most religions, and well, most esoteric perspectives within most religions, not most religions exoterically. In fact, I think that's one of the one of the things that separates the exoteric from the esoteric is what what I want to talk about a little bit, and that is that the the world in which we live is a world of illusion and the the world of truth lies somewhere beyond the world of illusion and that beyond is within us and uh, the hermetic principles talks about how the world is a reflection of the mind and it's a similar way of, of saying the same thing, is that the, that the world outside isn't real, it just seems real, because it is a reflection of, of uh, deeper principles that lie within our minds. And the idea being that, and this is all stuff that we talk about over and over again, but the idea being that, that light, when it is fragmented becomes form so that all of the physical world is illusory simply because it is a world of structure and limitation 
we know that this table is a table because it's not everything else. I know that I'm over here and you're over there because we have bodies and our bodies define the forms and the structures. So, and all of that is fine. It's a beautiful thing because the world serves us as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a vehicle for learning and relationship and we're able to actually take note of what's in our consciousness if we understand these wisdom principles because we can look to the world and we can see it reflected back. So we're able to, to, to understand ourselves a little bit better. So um, basically, what, what Eli and so many people, you know, there's nothing, I mean, yes, Eli was a very good teacher, but there's nothing sacred about Eli. I mean, so we're not Eli fundamentalists. It's just like all, all truth is truth, and you know it's truth because it feels right. <laughs> you know? Right. Have the facts to back it. Right. Yeah, and Eli had some problems with some of his history, and you know, so that's whatever. But but the but the truths behind that. Well, I, I see him as a myth maker because I'm, I mean, I never I never look at and this is a little diversion. I never look at any of the any of the like the first book of wisdom as as being supposed to be some sort of history. You know, it's I I don't even think he ever. It, it's I think it's even stated in the beginning of it. Don't believe this because oh it's just right. a story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you believe this, you're kind of a fool because it's these are this is allegorical to, you know, some deeper principles and truths. Anyway, so but the 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 idea being that all the wisdom in the world is usually the most secret wisdom is put right out in front. So that you, it's so close that you miss it. So one of the one of the ways that our, I mean, you, if you listen to like fairy tales and like little sayings that people have, but nobody knows where they came from, usually there's, it's because it comes from the the, the ancient craft, whatever you want to call that, the, the old 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 religion, because nobody knows where it came from, but it stuck around. One of my favorite versions of that, and maybe we do know where it comes from, but I never knew where it came from, was the song, Row, Row, Row Your Boat. If you could memorize that song and live your life accordingly, you really get farther ahead than most people studying very, very complex principles. That's fine. Row, row, row your boat. Well, what's your boat? Your life, right? Maybe. I'd like it. Gently down a stream. So gently, we are going to drive our lives down our destiny, our destination. Merrily, merrily, merrily. We need to know what the joy in life is, and that's if we're not enjoying our lives, we are obviously on the wrong stream. Even within our problems, even in our tragedies, even in the most dire of our experiences, we have to recognize that there's joy there. And that's very difficult. We'll talk about that in a minute. Life is but a dream. This world is a reflection of another principle. This world doesn't exist. This is a dream. We are living in a dream world. Now, life is but a dream doesn't mean, oh, well then, so what? So let's just not even care. Life is a dream, and that's been talked about by all the wisdom religions. It doesn't mean life is a dream, therefore you shouldn't even care, and nothing really matters, so just go sit on a mountaintop and contemplate your navel, because that's the only real power. Life is a dream, meaning that it is important. Our dream world is as important as our waking reality. And if you understand um, a lot of my favorite psychology that deals with dream interpretation, puts everything in the dream as being part of you. Okay, I dreamed of a green cat drinking lemonade. Well, what is the green cat? What is the lemonade? Where was that? Well, what, you know, what, what, all of those symbols, even, even, even if it's somebody you know, you know, my, my uncle Henry was, was chopping a, a, a tree down. Well, the tree is you. The axe is you. Uncle Henry is you, right? 
So life being a dream, that means everything we come in contact is all about you. These people represent a part of you. This furniture represents a part of you. This sunset represents a part of you. Your, your craft represents a part of you. Your job represents a part of you. Your money represents a part of you. Your law represents a part of you. Your, um, your traffic tickets represent a part of you. Your sickness represents a part of you. All of it is, if you, if you choose to see it that way, is highly symbolic and, and validly open to interpretation because life is a dream. And, and a dream doesn't just happen according to my understanding of a dream. There is no such thing as an insignificant dream. If I remember the dream, if I, if, especially if I recognize that I'm dreaming, if I'm lucidly dreaming, it's very important data for me to understand. Now, you don't necessarily go to a dream dictionary to find out what it means. You go to you, your internal teacher, and work it out. And it might take some work. Okay? But we, so, and most of us, when we come and talk, most of us don't have a problem with the dream part of it. So it's like, okay, I had a dream. Let's, what is this about? We, we, we will work hard and find out about what many of us do. I mean, I encourage that to keep a dream diary and look at those and, and let your dreams teach you. But very few of us want to look at the boring job that we have day to day and ask what it represents. <laughs> what does that mean? What does this mean? Why is this here? It's, it's, it, it, is it a sacred symbol or not? Because if not, then you're saying what you're saying when you're saying that this boring job or this, this car that doesn't work or this electricity that doesn't work, whatever it is. And it's not just problems, it's all of it. You know, all of it. If you're saying that this is the mundane world, this is what I, one of the things that we do in the craft, right? We don't, but many, many people do is, well, I'm going to return this space once more to the mundane. We are going to separate with the circle, the sacred from the mundane. Well, that's saying that there's a mundane world that doesn't matter, and there's a sacred world that matters. And that is so sophomoric because it's the, it's, yes, your spiritual experiences, your spiritual disciplines are important because they, they fuel your focus. They fuel your magic. They fuel everything, right? But your magic is supposed to show up in the mundane world, what we call the mundane world. And the mundane world is where the rubber meets the road. Now, to say, I, I, so what we do is we say, I like this about my life, I don't like this about my life. I like this about my life, I don't like this about my life. This is a significant relationship, this is an insignificant relationship. This is definitely not a significant relationship because I can't stand that asshole. The, you know what I mean? That's what we do. That's how we handle our lives. And what, what wisdom is saying is, wait a minute. If you're doing that, then you're missing out on 98% of what we're trying to teach you. And therefore, you are not speeding up your progress like we say we're here to do. Because an initiation, what's an initiation do for you? It doesn't, what's that? How do you think that happens? To the level of tests. Okay. It's the level of tests, but the tests are already happening. It's the knowledge. I, it's the how you awareness, deal with it. awareness of it. The awareness that something's happening. Most people go through life and they are unaware that anything's going on. Some of those people go to church on Sunday and they're aware that something's going on somewhere in some other world. Or something will happen, something will go on sometime when we die. Mm -hmm. But some of us have a technology where we say that we have the ability to plug into all power and to make a change and to make things happen. We tend to call that magic. Whatever you want to call it is fine. But we tend to call that magic. Well, so what that tells us, especially when we say, okay, well, what we want to do in order to empower ourselves magically, because really that's what we're doing, is we're going to take an initiation. Well, the initiation ceremony is very, very important, yes. But that's not what the initiation is. 
I mean, it's part of it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a ceremony. It's like your graduation from from college is not where you got the knowledge. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> right. But isn't it also true that that a lot of the knowledge you get in college or high school is not in the classroom? You learn, you grow up. That's where you grow up. Well, in our thing, we are growing up spiritually. Supposedly, that's what we're here to do is become cosmic adults, right? So what, what that means to me is that when we start to... Um, so what happens is this phenomenon is, oh, I take an initiation and then all hell breaks loose. You know, all, oh, I got more problems. But that's, it's, it, I understand why people say that because it appears to be so sometimes. But that's only because you weren't looking before. It's not that you got all these new problems, <laughs> it's just that you were asleep to the old ones. You were just blind. <laughs> right, you were, you were blind and now you see, hallelujah. So, when you, um, when you understand, when we all start to understand that the, what, what perfection is, or enlightenment, or, or whatever you want to call that, the, the, what our purpose here, our growing up, is ultimately an awakening. That's usually what you hear about in, in all of these in all of these old stories. Is, is is an awakening, an awakening to who we are. Becoming perfect is waking up to the perfection that's dormant within you. That's that's already you're already coded for it. But you're awakening. You're waking up, or you're being reborn. Okay, but but a baby when they re, when they are born, that's one thing they do is they wake up, they open their eyes, and they start to cry. So when you when you wake up and you start to be born into uh, into a new way of living, oftentimes it is a little violent. Oftentimes it does seem scary because you were in a liquid environment and now you're in an air environment. You were in a dark place now you're in a light place. You were in a quiet place now you're in a loud place. Okay, that's what happens when you're born. So it's traumatic for the kid, but you don't just not let it be born because you don't want it to feel. The, the trauma. You, you, sorry, you got to go through this. You, you're not just going to stay in the womb forever. <laughs> stay in there. We don't want to bother you. No. You know. But the same thing happens for us. It's just like, well, you know, sorry. <laughs> life, life gets a little messy sometimes. But, but the, tr but, but what's good about that is, it's not as, again, gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. What that means to me is, our job is to, as the as as our old um, friend once said, to walk tall and carry a big stick. Is that you're able to? The more power you you yield, the easier it is for you to be gentle because you uh, you're, you you are stronger. A ge a truly gentle person. A truly gentle being is one that has less fear. Um, it, it, the, the, the smaller life forms that are the, that are fodder for for all the you know that are that are going to be eaten by more creatures, they don't tend to be docile little happy things. They're constantly scampering around, trying to right. save themselves. Right. So so for us. The way that we become gentle is not because is not is not by putting the brakes on our on our progress. It's by becoming stronger and having less to fear. And how do you have less to fear? Okay, yes. From knowing yourself. It comes from knowing yourself. Yes. And, and and what did we say? Everything in the dream represents you. So what are you afraid of? You're afraid of you, right? Yeah. So there's an old axiom, and I don't know where it came from, but I love it. It says, if you can feel it, you can heal it. So that's, that's the, the feelings that we have to, uh, what, what happens is we, we try to, we try to um, there's, um, instead, of, instead of becoming more awake in the dream, becoming more lucid in our dreaming, we tend to want to become less conscious of the stuff that's not as much fun, right? So we want to take a sleeping pill during this part of the dream, and then we want to be awake for this part of the dream, and go back to sleep for this part of the dream, and pick and choose. And, and life is saying, but wait a minute, it's all equally important. What our problem is, is that we don't understand that there's joy in all of that icky stuff. 
And I had somebody once, an old teacher once, that told me that you're either enjoying your experience or you're enjoying not enjoying your experience. And he's, he's seen that people can enjoy not enjoying not enjoying their experience, but he's never seen anybody go any farther than that. So one of those three, you're either enjoying what's happening, you're enjoying not enjoying what's happening, or you're enjoying not enjoying not enjoying what's, unhappening, what, what's happening to you. And that's about it. And I thought, that's very interesting. I'm going to look at that. And that's when meditation becomes very, very helpful because I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I'm meditating, there's a part of me that's watching what's happening. that's not involved in the drama. And there's a part of me that's involved in the drama. The part of me that's involved in the drama is not having a good time. But there's part of me that's going... <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny how he does that all the time. Or they're saying, ah, they think they're conscious, but they're not enjoying it, thinking that they're conscious. <laughs> but that's about it. That's about as far as it goes. You're either, you're either a conscious of your enlightenment or you're not, and you think you're enlightened. If, you, if you're enlightened in any moment, if, you're, if you are lucidly dreaming, you're not feeling... You're not, you're not feeling despair. You are enjoying it. You might be going through pain, yes. You might be going through sorrow, yes. You might be going through some real bad shit, yes. But there's part of you that is witnessing it and is not going through that stuff. What we talked about in a, net different, in a different group um, last week was that most of what we're afraid of concerns what can happen to our bodies and to our stuff. But very, very few of us are afraid of anything other than that. Now, what, what happens with unenlightened religion, or what I want to call mafia religion, where they, where they, where they get you, is they, they materialize your soul. They materialize your mind that you don't have ownership of your mind and somebody might get you. You might go to hell. You might go to heaven, you might go to hell, because you don't have ownership of that. Therefore, you are out of control, and that's a terrifying place to be. However, if you look at some of these old saints that were involved in the same weird religion, they kind of got that it didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't really, yeah, it didn't matter. This is like, well, okay. <laughs> so, my, my point being that that the, that that our greatest power in life and in magic comes from the realization that there is nothing real about our experience, but that our experience is extremely important to us to learn from, to study. But it's not so much, how do I get out of this? That's what, that's what we usually think is the lesson. Okay, I've got to solve this. I've got, I've got to learn this lesson. How do I get out of this problem? And when we do that, we don't really learn the lesson, so we end up recreating it again. And then we recreate it again. We create it again. And what the lesson is, is not so much how to solve the problem in such as how do I escape from this. The lesson is, what does this represent about me? What does the bill mean? What do the bill collectors think? represent to me right what does the what does this whatever it is represent to me what does this illness represent and I'm not saying that learning those lessons will necessarily fix the problem I am saying this that you are in much 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 better position to fix the problem if you rise above it and you're able to to come from it from from a wise perspective in my experience, I have no power over my life while I'm being afraid of my life, while my life is running me. But if I can start to look at any part of my life as, as lucidly as I can by saying, hmm, that, is me. that situation there isn't happening to me, that is me. Usually, that's the place where I can say, 
oh, I get it. I don't need to do this anymore. I, I, got, I got the lesson. I got the lesson. And I have to be willing to be honest with the fact that I loved being in that moment. I loved it. There was part of me that really got off on that ticket, that really got off on that being sick, that really got off on the, the, the fender bender. All of that. Now, it even, but, but see, the thing is, is and, and, and that's not bad. That's good. That's good to recognize this, that there's joy in those parts of your life. That means that, means that, you're, that you're getting more joy. But see, we don't like that. We think, oh, wait a minute, because this is the, going back to the, the, to the magical thinking is not magical thing that I talked about once a long time ago. We are afraid that if we think about things bad, that we think are bad in joyful ways, that we're condoning that in our lives, and therefore we are going to create more of that. Rather than saying, this is, this is an important reflection of my deeper self, my deeper mind, and I need to sit with it, and I need to be with it, and I need to find the joy in it, and that's the only way I can integrate it. Because rising above it almost is, is kind of silly, because then you're still saying that it's separate from me. But if you integrate it, and you say, this is part of me, I own this, then it's just, it usually disappears. Easier to deal with. What did what did what did um, Dorothy do? She just threw water, and the wicked witch disappeared because she integrated it. She integrated it. It didn't even have any substance, right? So usually, what happens to us is in the in the midst of our dream, when we start to integrate these parts of our dreams that are nightmares, the dreams start to turn into happier dreams. Because the happier dreams then start to reflect the truth about us is that, 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 that we are coming from a calm mind. Because these, these ups and downs and ups and downs in our lives represent an undisciplined mind. All of us. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I have this handled. But that's true. I know that it's true. Because I can, I can, always, I can always navigate through it if I'm willing to if I'm willing to really feel it, if I'm really willing to feel it, feel what it is and not fall asleep to it, not put my head in the sand, not run away from it, not pretend that it doesn't exist. The bills in the drawer, pulling the bills in the drawer out and looking at them, it's just like, <gasps> you know, I'm not, I, I don't have bills in the drawer anymore, but I know what that's like. I've been there. I used to have bills in the drawer. And it's just like, oh, I don't want to look at the bills in the drawer. But the, whose bills are those? They're your bills. Yeah, but they, you know, they, they represent a part of you that is, you know, that, that, that is very, very important and very, very sacred. And by stuffing them and saying that these are bad, then you're basically saying that there's part of you that's bad. It's not sacred. Part of you, you know, it's just like, oh, I don't want to go to the doctor because I don't want to hear what, well, okay. But then you're saying that, that your illness is part of you that's not sacred because you're not willing to look at it. Well, I don't want to talk about, you know, my, my marriage to my, my spouse. Well, that's because there's this, your spouse is a part of you that's not sacred. So you're compartmentalizing it. You're shoving it away. And we all have our stuff, you know. But, but when you start to look at that, isn't there a little guilt? Isn't there a little shame? And that's the reason why you're going, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see that. Right? Well, good. Because that shame... That guilt is a part of you that needs to be integrated. If everything is... What is that old saying? There is, there is no spot where God is not? Isn't that what the craft teaches? That, there's, that there is no part of me that is not of the gods. There is no part of... There is no stone that's not sacred. There's no tree that's not sacred. There's no place on earth that's, that's unsacred. That, every, that, that the goddess is in, in everything. That there are nature spirits everywhere. That the flame and the earth and the water and the air are all imbued with magical power. But it doesn't have... It does not extend to your bills. Right? It does not extend to your marriage. It does not extend to your, 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 the cramp in your foot. It does not extend to anything that's, that's part of you that you, right? 
that, that you have these that you have these little shame things about. But if you let the if you if you open up and just say, wait a minute. If, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderfully freeing thing is to take your is to take your stuff one at a time is fine. Just what you know, go go with what's easy. This is like what is the thing that you're avoiding the most, and what happens if you look at that and you just say, pr praise the goddess. Look at what this is. Look at this. I'm uh, this is there's there's so much magic in here that I've been there's so much power that I have been unwilling to share with myself because I've been I've been shoving this away because there's part of me that I thought was unsacred. I could have had some magic. You know? I could have I could have been powerful. I could have had my life work. And and it's funny because we have these judgments. We we look at other people and we say, well, they have cancer so their life isn't working. Well, that's your judgment. I know a lot of people that have cancer whose life is working a lot better than people who don't have cancer. And whether or not they heal their cancer is really none of my business. And if they don't, it doesn't necessarily mean that they did it wrong. Right? And that's not to say that cancer is incurable. That that's not to say that, that, that magic doesn't heal cancer. But if somebody, for whatever reason, doesn't get that or doesn't want to get that or needs this or whatever, then none of my business if they've got cancer and, 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 and that somehow that they're doing something wrong, that they're sort of you know, unenlightened or they don't have the right spell. <laughs> right? However... For some reason, they want to experience Maybe. That. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows what it is? But I do know this, that there's some people that have been, that, that have been, for whatever reason, dying and have died that have been a heck of a lot more enlightened than I ever have been. And that there's people that, do, for whatever reason, have something that, that if I'm projecting onto their life as a, oh, well, they've got this problem. Or they've got that problem. They're or they're getting a divorce, or they're or they're in bankruptcy, or or they're this or they're that. Somehow, it's really easy to say, "Oh well, you know, th th their life isn't working." I don't know that. It might be working beautifully. How do I know that they're not in absolute bliss in that? Even if it doesn't look like they are, even if it looks like they're raging, I don't know. Maybe they're having a great time raging, hmm. right? But what I do know is that my judgment on them is part of my dream. They, what they represent to me is what's important. Does that make sense? So what their awareness is to them is none of my business. Is none of your business. Okay. Yeah, but what they, but they're in my life. So they, so they're in my dream. They represent something. They mean something. They, they, they represent me. I mean, everything represents me. That's what an omen is. Did you know that? That's what an omen is. Is if you are if you are totally tuned in, and and, and tuned into your uh, to to your magical center, you're able to look out on the world with new eyes and say, ah, the cloud, or ah, the chicken, or oh, the tea leaves, or oh, the bumper sticker, or oh, the billboard. And when you and 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 sometimes I'll I'll, I'll say. I'll, I'll ask for some clarification on something. And I'll just walk and somebody will just say, blah, 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 blah. And if I was not aware in that moment, I wouldn't realize that that was verbatim what I asked my, my question about. <laughs> Try it. Ask for, in fact, let's do that. Anybody have a, 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 you don't have to verbalize it, but does everybody have like one thing that they really, if they could, if, if you knew that you could call up Mercury on the phone, you know, the, the God, the messenger, God, and say, Hermes, hey, buddy, I need to know this right now. This is very important to me. Is, is that for, and would anybody have a question? Or would you just hang up the phone? You wouldn't have a question? I have a question. Okay, so think of that question. Come up with your question in your mind, okay? Take a few deep breaths. Hermes, Thoth, Mercury, 
we ask in this moment that within the next three days an omen appear so that this question is answered very accurately. Thank you very much. Together we say blessed be. Blessed be. Now, how easy was that? But now, that's, that's the problem though, is we'll do these great spells. <laughs> we shut them, then we shut down and we go out in our lives and we're just so focused on, on our own, on, on, on all of the, um, the, the little minutia that, 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 that we can't, that we're not open to the magic. So, but watch, you watch, you take, a, you take note. Within the next three days, something's going to happen. You're going to, you'll see something. Somebody will call you. You'll see a movie. There'll be a, somebody will, you, you'll see a billboard. That's what I get a lot of times is billboards or, 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 or bumper stickers. I mean, it's just amazing. I, I asked something once and, and it, the, the, I can't remember even what it was now, but, I, 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 it, but the bumper sticker was like exactly the answer. <laughs> like blah, 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 blah. I never, you know, it's, you never know. You never know where it's going to come. But that's what those omens are all about is recognizing that every part of our dream, our what we call our waking consciousness, every part of that is valid, is important, is essential, if we choose to see it that way. So, the other thing about all of this is that um, when when you have a, um, a guilt or a shame. Or if, um, which oftentimes will, will manifest in a fear. What we tend to do, what many of us tend to do, is, is we don't want to feel that because we think if we can avoid it, then it doesn't exist. So what we tend to do is we do what a lot of um, people call suppress. We suppress it out of our, out of our mind. And then what, what, what happens is it shows up in spontaneously in our lives because it's trying to be the dream and say hello 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 this is this needs your attention but we are so cunning and that we are so capable of using our own um, our, our own intelligence our own genius uh, in, in ways that 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 serve our neuroses rather than our enlightenment that what we tend to do is we tend to start to see the very thing that we suppress as other people's behavior and start to make them an enemy and be there and, and 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 we're so good at that that we don't even think that that has anything to do with us that, that, that she's such a bitch he's such an asshole you know but we're not and others what we ourselves are guilty of well yes it's very true but a lot of times that, that, that what you're calling being guilty of, we are so detached from it that we don't even have any clue that it originated from us. Because remember why we say the mind creates? The, the, the mental world is causative and the physical world is a world of effect, okay? So that can happen consciously or unconsciously. When it happens unconsciously, it's, the, it's, it's trying to wake us up to what we're thinking, right? But we can, we can keep throwing it back onto the world, throwing it back onto the world, throwing it back onto the world. And, 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 and it's, it can become very difficult sometimes for us to recognize what's going on until it hits a crisis point. Because there's a, there's a point at which you can only take that so far and the universe says enough, enough with this. And then usually you have a crisis and then when you have a crisis there's an opening for you to understand what's going on on some level. So, um, in order to, we, but the, the, the good news is, is that we don't need the crisis if we are willing to take it as it comes. We don't, in fact, the, it's, it's, it's less stressful if we don't have the crisis because it's very high stress to you know, suppress, 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 crisis, crisis, suppress, suppress, suppress. I mean, you can, you can be on that treadmill for lifetimes and you can carry that stuff over for lifetimes, um, theoretically, right? So what happens is that the, the, the mind is creative in basically one of three ways. You either 
typical what's popular that law of attraction stuff, right? If if you, that you that you draw unto you the thing that you that is in your consciousness, be it for good or ill, you know, because it's all for good. It's all for good. I mean, it's just trying to heal you. I mean, the the conscious aware magician is trying to integrate all of these parts of themselves so that they have power over their lives so that they can at will create their will rather than be at the effect of their their unconscious drives okay and that's what you know by the way did you know that that's what 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 the that the what the esoteric and I'm not I'm not saying that you should go do this but that's the esoteric reason why uh, people raise demons that's the whole point of that is 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 not to not to raise a demon to go I mean that that's the unfortunately that's what it degraded it to. But actually these demons were supposed to be parts of, of the unconscious self that they were integrating. So that they would they would bring them into they would bring them into into the triangle of manifestation in order for them to integrate it into their personalities. So that was that was supposed to be a transformative experience and then it de, then it degenerated into go and attack my neighbor, go get me some money, go do this, go do that. Um and, and so, okay, so that's one level, is, 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 is you can draw unto you that which you're, what is in your mind, whether you do it consciously or unconsciously, or you can do what we just said before, um, you can project onto another person or event that thing that, you, that is in your mind, whether or not it's really even true, or, and I'll give you examples of this in a minute, or... You can, um, you can train and create and, 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 and basically manipulate your current experiences to conform to your, your thinking. So here's, let me show you. So here's how it is. So let's, let's say this person has this unconscious law in their brains that I always go out with alcoholics. All I ever get is alcoholics. They may not be aware of this, but they've got this. Well, they could just draw alcoholics to them. That's one way to deal with it. Or they could be with somebody who's not an alcoholic. Every time they take a glass of wine, oh, see, alcohol, projecting. Doesn't exist, but they, they think it does, right? Or they could literally drive this person to drink and create an alcoholic out of the situation. So, see what I'm saying? So either way, your thought is creative. You're either going to attract it, you're going to project it, or you're going to manipulate it. One of the ways you will get what you're thinking. The best thing, and, and all for the good of being able to, when you are able to recognize that everything in your life is a representative of you, it doesn't matter if, it, if it's how it got there. It represents that to you now. So what that can do for the person once they finally go, oh, this represents a part of me. I have a belief that I draw alcoholics to me. What, what does that mean? And they can, they can literally sit with that and, and like, what did I say? If you can feel it, you can heal it. They can get, the, oh, Whatever it was, oh, dad, my dad was an alcoholic. You know, my dad was an alcoholic, and I hate my dad, and I was, I'm, I'm, I love my dad, but I hate my dad, I love my dad, blah, blah, blah. and never, never have integrated all this. They can sit with that, and they can, they can become one with that, and they can integrate that either, either magically and or through therapy or whatever their technique is, because therapy is a type of magic. Because remember, it's just all magic is creating results at will, you know. And all results are a change of consciousness. So then once they integrate that, then there's no more, there's no more need for that to be in their life. They're, they don't, they don't do that anymore. It's gone. And so they're, they're, now they're in a place of power where they can say, I want a, I want a healthy relationship. And they can actually come in and consciously create that or co-create that with, with their magical whether they're involved in magic like we do or whether they're involved in some other kind of 
psychotherapy or whether they're involved in Catholicism, whatever kind of magic that they're into, um, they're able to create a healthy relationship for themselves because they found that that um, that they were that they were that they were unconsciously creating this for themselves. They were able to integrate that pattern, for lack of a better word, and now they're able to instead they're coming from a place of power so that they can consciously co-create with the universe or with the, with God's um, a relationship that's healthy. Does that make sense? So the same thing goes with the, all of our stuff. If you're, if you're willing to just like whatever your big bugaboo is, and maybe your big bugaboo is money, you know, maybe that's a big thing for you and that's fine. It's big for most people I know. Um, well, if you recognize that money represents something to you, it represents something to you. Look at the dream. What are the circumstances that are constantly, oh, the recurring dreams that happen in your, your, your waking, quote, waking consciousness? What are the recurring dreams that happen over and over and over again? Are you, or is it your dream that you always get fired from your job? Is it your dream that you always spend more than you make? Is it your dream that you, whatever your thing is, you just can't get enough? You just, no matter what you do, you can't make ends meet. Okay, none of that's bad. All that's good. You're enjoying it on some level. Recognize that. If you recognize that you're enjoying this whole experience, it makes it much easier to keep delving deeper and deeper and deeper until you finally, you will, if you are really practicing, again, this is all about spiritual practice that happens daily. It's usually through meditation and or ritual. You get to a point where you're able to work with this for a while and you can say, ah, you have an aha moment. It always happens. It clicks. You're like... Got it. You might not even be able to verbalize, but you get it. You get it. <laughs> Usually you know you get it because it's very funny. If there's something funny, you know, you can laugh at the most bizarre things. And the, the most tragic experiences, people, I found myself just starting to laugh. And it's very embarrassing, you know, at a funeral, by the way. But I, I, it's where I do it often because it's very funny. You know, when, you, when, you, when something clicks, you, 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 you get a chuckle out of it. So... Um, which is the whole idea, the whole mystery of the laughing god, by the way. That's a good, it's a good, I mean, you know, Pan, Puck, all the different laughing gods that you can, invoking those gods are really, really helpful because the faster you get to the laughter, by the way, the, the, the quicker you get there. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. I'm going to show you a way to do that. Um, we'll do a little magic at the end of this. What, um, but anyway, so once you get that aha moment, whether you, you get, you, you might get it, you might get a, you might get, be able to verbalize something, whatever you get, there's a space that's created, a blank canvas that, 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 that comes out of the ethers, and then you're able to say, what do I want? What do I, what is my joy? And again, it's really not what you want. It's what the joy is that's, that was put there, you know, that that's what you want. Is that joy that, that when you fall, you'll find me when you reach the end of desire? Is the charge of the goddess that uh, uh, Doreen Valiente wrote? It's a beautifully inspired, inspired poem because it states to me that the, that my 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 heart's desires were not something that I just made up one day on a whim. They were put there by a force that's much bigger than than who I think I am. That the, but that I am connected to. And so once you're able to have that aha moment and you're able to clear the space and, 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 and not, not create by default anymore, then you're able to say, well, what do I want? What is my desire? And then you get to have what you want. It may or may not look what you think it is, but, but the feeling's there. The feeling is always there. Does that make sense, kind of? So, so that's what the real work is. You know, that's where the law of attraction really messes things up, is they skip all these preliminary steps of, 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 of growing and enlightening us and, and, moving into, and, 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 and moving into our perfection, and they get, well, what do you want? Well, how are you supposed to know what you want until you're creating that space? You don't know what you want. You know what you think you want. You know what your addictions are. You know what your little, you know, what, what you think you want. But once you're able to, like we said, move into these places in your dream to where you're able to to recognize that in any situation the universe is showing you exactly what it is about yourself that you're projecting out onto the screen of life 
then you're able to integrate that. You're in a position of power over it. There's no more, any, no longer anything to fear about the situation because you realize that it's all you. And there's nothing wrong, and then you can actually start to have something happen. And that's where magic really comes into play. Does that make kind of sense? So when you're in the, like, let's say for example, if I'm in a dream and I've seen everything that I've seen, and then I go back into it and I change things. That's because I've become aware of what was going on. Are you right? talking about in your actual lucid dreaming, like in at my nighttime? Lucid dream at night. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's that's a very important that's a very important tool to be able to have. But I'm talking about the dream in your waking consciousness. Right. Okay. That's what we're talking about here. Right. Is not that that's a whole. They're 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 very connected. Right. That, the, and also in in the waking, when you actually realize you see something, and then you're like. Now I know why. Yes. Now, if you're able to change that, then you know that you've gotten power over it. Yes, absolutely. But sometimes there's nothing to change. Sometimes you just, it's fine the way it is. You just thought it was bad. You just thought it was bad, and it was actually your biggest gift. That's been a big deal for me. There's been so many things I was like, I don't only do that. You know, it's like I, I used to think if I only didn't have these parents, if I only didn't have these parents, everything would be great. And it wasn't until later that I realized, but those parents are, I mean, I'm just like, I would never want another, another parent now. You know, I'm like, this is my biggest gift is my parents, one of the biggest gifts of my life. So I'm glad that I wasn't able to just like wave my magic, magic wand and have different parents, you know. <laughs> You know, so sometimes, sometimes when our magic doesn't work, it's a huge gift until we're able to be responsible and adult enough to understand what we're dealing with here. Okay, so I want to talk to you just really quickly. Let's do a little magic, okay? Are you really ready for this? Are you really ready for a breakthrough? I want you to think about a problem that needs something to open, to, that needs to be healed. And it should be the one that's on your mind right now, okay? And if you're not, if you don't, if you really have to think about your problems, just think, think about the one that's the most occurring one, the one that you think about the most often during your day-to-day -day life. Okay, now let's get your stuff off your lap, get your spine straight, take some really big deep breaths, Breathe all the way in deep into the abdomen. Relax the exhale. Pull the navel all the way into the spine to get rid of all the excess breath. Take about three or four more of those. Big, giant, cleansing breaths. And I'm calling on the god Pan into our sacred grove. And I'm calling upon Pan as the god that is capable of integrating this part of our lives right now for us. We are willing in this moment to have the aha. And whether or not we understand what the aha is until a day or two later, that's fine with us. Because right now, we are ready. So Pan, please come. Please enter right here, right now, in this very instant. Big, giant breath. Think about your problem. Exhale. And without thinking about it, why don't you just start laughing? <laughs> <laughs> where you wanted to stop laughing the most okay because you can take this exercise home because you want to be able to do that for 20 minutes or so really? 
20 minutes. You want to set your, you want to see, it's good ab exercise. But I noticed when I was just starting to get into it, everybody else was just like, okay, this is enough. <laughs> so what you want to be able to, you can set your, your, your alarm on your iPhone or on whatever you have. And we're just going to, and, and that you do it just that way. Just that way. And if you can, every time you start thinking about that problem, it starts to create <laughs> that laughter. Something is happening. Something major is happening. There's a major shift. Because what did we say? Once you, once you can laugh at the problem, there's integration happening. So why not go straight for the laughter? Why not call upon the laughing God and just get right to it? Right? You're not skipping steps. Because you're doing the biggest work. You're laughing. You get the best workout on the laugh than you do on the worry, right? The worry doesn't do anything but make you but make you have flabby abs. The laughter gives you those washboard abs. And that's what we want. Maybe. <laughs> Any questions? You know, no, but I was thinking like when I was a kid, you know, if you'd get hurt or your friend would get hurt and you'd laugh at him, right? <laughs> yeah. That's tragic. Kid falls off his bike and he's bleeding, but I'm laughing at him. Um, and I think maybe that's, you know, like... I guess as an adult now, a two-year-old falls over. If we all freak out, he's going to freak out. So if we're all lighthearted... My then... grandma always laughed when we fell down. We never knew it was that we were hurt. Right. We never That's... knew. Yeah. Well, do we, do, did anybody see the Mika Brzezinski thing? Fiasco? Okay. Well, this I, was it this morning or yesterday? I can't remember. Sh they showed something that was a, a, like this silly like commercial about Dick Cheney. <laughs> And it was very, I thought it was very funny. Regardless, I would have thought of it was funny regardless of whose side politically yeah. I was on. Because it was just funny. Yeah. And she lost it. And she started laughing so hard. And she couldn't stop. Yeah. And nobody else on the set laughed. Mm -hmm. And they looked at her disapprovingly and thought she was being very inappropriate and irreverent. But how can you laugh so hard? Hard and be around somebody that's laughing so hard and not be not, affected by it. There's something wrong with you if you, if you can do that. There's yeah. that's really, really, really sad. Those people, those people need a lot more Pan in their lives. Mm -hmm. And I think we can actually ask Pan to go visit them tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just as a blessing, not manipulating, but just yeah. have a little bit of a blessing Love and blessing. let them find a little laughter because if we you know can you imagine if you were able to look at Osama bin Laden and laugh hmm. if you were able to look at some of the biggest tragedies I mean real big tragedies that doesn't mean when you're laughing it doesn't mean that you have no compassion it means that you're sending healing that way there's appropriate times and places for this. What is a laughing God? He's a compassionate God. Well, and you know that the, uh, the Gnostics talked about the laughing Jesus, but the Catholic, the Catholic Church took all those pictures away. Those pictures are gone. <laughs> this is very serious business. So know that there's a time and a place for everything. There's, there's secrecy in the craft. And so sometimes you go and you do this in secret because you know that they won't understand Forgive them for they know not what they do. Is laughing then at that kind of like uh, at the end of things where we'll clap to spell energy? You can. So laughing at that. I've been in that. very, very, very serious circles. Very serious magical circles where we're doing very, very serious work. And spontaneously everybody just starts laughing and we can't stop. And, we, and I remember the first time that happened, we were like, oh, did we just fuck it up? <laughs> and no, it happened so much faster. Yeah. The results just were like so dramatic. So when that starts to happen, and I'm not saying that you always should do that, but, but because like I said, there's a time and a place for everything. A lot of times it's in solitude that that works the best. But when that happens spontaneously, don't try to shut that down because oftentimes that's a huge, huge blessing. <laughs> it's not irreverent if you understand where it's coming from. You can tell the different kind of laughter, too. There's the, the snicker, snickering is not laughing. Yeah. If you feel it deep in your belly, yeah. and it's uncontrollable, and it just comes and waves and waves, and it feels better than throwing up, but it gets the same kind of, <laughs> re same kind of release that you get when you vomit, you know what I mean, when you're sick, it's then you know that it was from God. Then you know it was from Pan. 
Does that make sense? Anything else? We're going to call that a laugh out there. Well, thank you so much for having me. We'll see you next month.